Чацкий цветал на огонь, как от съезд. This is the story of fierce battles, a story about the Sand Tribe and their epic battle for survival in one of the world's harshest landscapes. Our story unfolds at the western tip of the African continent, where they roamed freely in one of the most harshest, beautiful landscapes in the world, living off the veld by hunting and collecting food from its bounty. Nature was their home, the wild was their neighbor, and life in the veld was tough. They often found themselves locked in fierce battles against predators who sought to steal their hard-earned hunts. Even the water holes did not belong to them. They had to share it with the other inhabitants. But this is more than just a story of survival. It's a testament to the indomitable human spirit. It's the story of how they conquered the unforgiving wilderness with their wits, determination, and a deep understanding of the natural world. Keep watching till the end, my friends, for there's a crucial lesson hidden within our epic battle for survival. Join us on this unforgettable journey as we unveil the untold story of the Sand Bushmen. Witness their enduring spirit, their unbreakable bond with nature, and learn the invaluable lesson they offer to us all. Jumque present-day home of the Juhuansi San language group, who inhabit this territory situated in the northeast of Namibia. These original inhabitants of this land have for centuries lived freely as hunter-gatherers across the plains of southern Africa. Today, however, due to technological development, these indisputably indigenous of this land have since been rounded up to live a contained existence in the so-called conservancies. This is the story of the life in the conservancy, told from the perspective of one of those living this very existence in present-day Namibia. We were hunters who lived off wild fruit and from hunting for game meat. The African terrain teemed with all sorts of animals, both the wild animals or game and the domesticated livestock. However, to us, an animal was just an animal. We did not differentiate between game or domesticated. We regarded all the animals as meat to hunt. Then, of course, we lived off wild fruits. We had a large variety of such wild fruit that we dug up to eat. There is, for instance, one type of wild fruit that has dual usage, meaning during the dry seasons when the water points would run dry, digging up and eating this particular wild fruit fills your tummy, and at the same time it also quenches your thirst. This particular wild fruit is called cha'a. The cha is probably the most important foodstuff. Everyone knows that this is the most sought-after foodstuff. Our people know the importance of knowing the telltale signs to look out for in order to find it in the bush. Another important skill was to know how to determine the different directions in which to find the kind of game one wants to hunt. It also helped a lot if one knows how to tell from reading the spoor which print belongs to which animal. We would also know how to tell in which direction the water points would be by just studying from animal footprints where they would head to drink water. The trick is to study the main trail the animals would branch into as they came from all directions in the bush. That one main path they all seem to join and head into one direction is the direction where one is guaranteed to find a water pan.
And when we decide to hunt for the pot, the number one thing to do is to make sure you are approaching the animal from downwind from where the animal is. There is upwind and downwind. Upwind means the animal is able to pick up your scent and then of course it will run away. Downwind is when the wind is blowing from the direction where the animal is. In order to determine which way the wind blows, one would scoop up sand and release it like this. You will now see which direction the wind blows the sand and that is the direction you also ought to be approaching the animal from. You will then be able to sneak up on the animals until the target is in a good striking distance. As long as you are downwind where the animals are not able to pick up your scent, I tell you, the animals can even spot you and they will not run away. Most animals, in fact, allow curiosity to get the better of them and would just stare at you, wondering what type of animal you might be. An animal will only run away once it picks up your scent, otherwise it will just be staring at you. After a kill, one would hide the carcass and then return home to get the family. The entire family would then move with everything and we would make the place where the kill happened our new home. This would now be our new home for as long as it will take us to finish eating up all the meat of this particular carcass. Hit that subscribe button now. Share our content with friends and family and embark on this incredible adventure with us where we uncover the secrets of our planet and make a positive impact on its future. Together, we can make a difference. Subscribe now. Share the launch. So, we will then have a big feast, light a bonfire and dance around the fire and we will eat the meat until we are full. The next day, some people would go out in the felt to dig for wild fruits to supplement the meat meal. Every morning as we wake up, we each have our different chores and we know what to do for the day. The women would, for instance, divide themselves into groups who would gather wild fruits and so on. Those who would remain home will be busy with household chores such as unstiffening and softening animal hides in order to make clothes and blankets to use when it gets cold during winter. The men would keep themselves occupied by making sure that their hunting weapons are up to standard. They would be sharpening arrows and preparing the poison, weaving ropes to use for the bows and for setting of bird traps. Then there is, of course, the arduous task of preparing the poison that is smeared on the tip of the arrows. One has to first look for the necessary ingredients, prepare the poison and smear it on the tips of the arrows. There is this one weapon that we use for hunting. It is a long stick with a noose on the one end. When we would hunt spring hares, one person would insert the noose end into the hole until you feel that the stick is now touching the spring hare. When you would feel the pull on the other end, then you now have to carefully pull the stick out until you have the spring hare out of the hole. You will then kill the spring hare, either by clubbing it to death or stabbing it with an assegai.
as we journey through the incredible traditions and wisdom of the San Bushmen. Let us remember the importance of preserving and respecting the diverse cultures that enrich our world. In the spirit of unity and understanding, let's unite and spread the message of love, tolerance, and appreciation for all. If you found this video inspiring and thought-provoking, please consider subscribing to our channel, sharing it with your friends and family, and giving it a thumbs up. Together, we can create a world where knowledge, compassion, and harmony flourish.